If you're looking for an active community of people who love watching movies together, Recotopia Podcast may be perfect for you. We've been consuming movies and picking them apart as part of our career for the past 10 years. Every week we let you know what we're watching the following week, and then we hang out and record our show with you. It is a veritable utopia of recommendations. Or Recotopia. Find out more about our show and who we are by checking out our podcast. Search for Recotopia, R-E-C-O-T-O-P-I-A, or CinemaSins in your podcast feed. After watching Raiders of the Lost Ark and you move on to this movie, you are right to ask, what the f*** is this sh-? Anything goes. Yep, this movie is basically telling us to expect some absolutely deranged and evil sh** that will, in just a month after this movie and Gremlins come out, lead to a new PG-13 rating. That's right, this movie where a dude pulls out another dude's heart was PG! We gave zero f- back in the 80s. This is Indiana Jones, famous archaeologist. At this point, what would Indiana Jones be famous for? Since this is a prequel, he hasn't done anything with the Ark of the Covenant yet, and apparently every time he makes a huge discovery, some asshole steals it from him. I suggest you give me what you owe me, or anything goes. Incorporating the opening musical number into your threats. Welcome home, old boy. Why is Indy drinking anything passed to him by guys who tried to steal Norhachi's ashes from him just last night? And who pulled a gun on him seconds ago? And who tried to pay him with coins instead of the diamond? The coins, it works fast, Dr. Jones. It does not. You keep it go. I find another. <laughs> if Lau had this little concern for Willie, then why did Lau give Indiana what he wanted when Indy was threatening her with the roast fork earlier? That's not a waiter. I swear this character's single trait is that she is the equivalent of the guy at every goddamn theater screening I go to audibly explaining what's happening on screen, just in case any of us in the audience weren't understanding the obvious. Also known as the holy sh- that's what Steve said to Sam in Captain America Civil War guy. <laughs> in order for a person to fire a gun in this situation and get away with it, you'd have to know that multiple champagne bottles are getting uncorked and time one of them perfectly. Wuhan doesn't feel a shot to his f-ing chest until he inspects the broken glass. Also, even though blood starts seeping through the shirt, neither it nor the jacket have a bullet hole in them. I followed you on many adventures. I mean, so many adventures that I'm not in any other Indiana Jones movies or TV shows. I show up in a couple books and a video game, but f- yeah, anyway, so many adventures. For someone dying of a fast-acting poison, Indy still has the strength to throw a flaming shish kebab so hard that it penetrates a man's chest and kills him. Now we get to enjoy over two minutes of Willie chasing the diamond and Indy chasing the editor while being attacked by random henchmen. And by enjoy, I mean wonder how this is only a two-minute sequence but feels like it goes on for all the some time. Geez, did the poison f*** Indy's brain up so much he needed to punch the cigarette lady? He's the good guy, right? Here, let's put Indiana into this cart and push him into the van. He'll think twice before he crosses the likes of us. He's throwing knives plunged into a f***ing statue instead of bouncing off of it, and they should have f***ing bounced. <laughs> that diamond doesn't look a damn thing like ice. Quit acting like this has turned into a needle in a haystack scenario. Indiana Jones in the Temple of Bloons. Why does every single bullet this guy shoots go underneath? Oh, wait, I forgot George Lucas produced this. Also, Indy doesn't have any weapons. There's no reason why this guy can't run up and get a better shot. This nonsense is especially egregious when Indy runs behind the gong. Ah, I see. They were at Club Obi-Wan the whole time. That name probably means a lot to people living in 1935 Shanghai. For others, they just weren't cool enough to get the reference. Look. Jesus Christ, is this guy everything, everywhere, all at once? Short round somehow knew to drive the car up to this exact location at this exact time. Okie dokie, Dr. Jones, hold on to your potatoes! Hold on to your potatoes. Another kind of girl! Indiana is most definitely reaching down a woman's dress without her explicit consent, and there was nothing okay about that, but why didn't Willie already get him the antidote? Hey, no. Dr. Jones, no time for love! Kids. I burnt my fingers and I cracked a nail! Man, I sure am glad this character isn't going to be with us for the whole movie. Holy sh- She's gonna be with us for the whole movie? Also, female character getting horribly upset in a dangerous situation because she's cracked a nail cliche. Ah, Dr. Jones, I'm a Weber. The way this scene is shot and edited, this Dan Aykroyd cameo doesn't contain any Dan Aykroyd. Also, assuming that the third person was going to be Wuhan and not Willy, how short of a notice did Art have to acquire this plane? Like, this would be part of the plan from the very beginning, right? Or is this movie saying it is somehow called Art on his 1930s cell phone on the way here? Heaven, aren't you Willie Scott, the famous American female vocalist? No one would refer to someone as the famous American female vocalist. They would say Willie Scott, the singer. Or just simply ask, aren't you Willie Scott? F***ing Art Weber. Nice try, Lao Shea.
So did Lao Che have these plane shenanigans set up? Because the way things go down, he would have had to. But if he was planning on poisoning India at the club, then why go through all the trouble of setting this up? He'd also have to have art on his payroll for this to happen, since it was apparently the best he could find on short notice. So wait, were the pilots hoping that everyone would be asleep to carry out this plan? What if they weren't? And this also requires them to be able to walk past them without waking them up. We're not sinking! We're crashing! Look, Kate Capshaw does everything this movie requires of her, and this is not her fault. But seriously, Willie Scott is one of the most annoying characters ever put on film. I just have to assume that all the people who thought Indy surviving a nuclear explosion by placing himself in a refrigerator was ridiculous totally forgot about the inflatable RAF parachute sequence from this installment. Ah, those 1984 special effects where the real image and the green screen image look like they're fighting and about to get a divorce. Also, this explosion. Wow, these guys landed on a mountain that's basically a goddamn ski resort. I'm not sure what the bigger sin is here. That they survive at all, or that all three of them somehow stay in the raft for the entire descent. Let's just give two sins and move on while a bit of my sanity is still intact. I hate the water! And I hate being wet! And I hate you! Would you have rather crashed into the mountain? This guy points them in the direction they need to go, and then when it transitions to the next scene, he's in front of them again, doing some super unnecessary motioning to the village he obviously led them to. I mean, did they start going in some other direction? And he was like, no, guys, not there, here, where the party's at. There is a new Maharaja, and again, the palace has the power of the dark light. Why does this guy think that Indiana can battle pure evil and take back a sacred stone stolen from his village? All Indy did was show up on a raft carrying a kid and an American singer. He didn't say, I'm Indiana Jones, conqueror of evil. Or is he so famous that his exploits have reached tiny rural villages in India? Steven Spielberg runs with a blatant and pretentious Jaws reference, so Michael Bay and Ambulance could fly with a blatant and pretentious The Rock reference, also known as the Circle of Ego. Being Hindu now. Saying when the sacred stone was taken, the village wells dried up and the river turned to sand. If Indy knew how to speak their language, why was he speaking English to them when they were eating? Then one night there was a fire in the fields. Sure, it's more dramatic and cinematically pleasing for Indy to turn around and translate this horror story to the audience, but how f***ing rude is it that Indy turns his back on this guy while he tells it? He says they stole their children. Indiana Jones and the When a Stranger Calls. Shankara. Why the hell did Indy come all the way up here to look at the parchment? Does he need the best view possible to think about treasure hunting? Little boy escaped from the evil palace. Many other children still there. Why is Short Round relaying this information to Indy? Couldn't Indy have just waited long enough in the village to hear what the kid had to say about the other children? Seriously, why is he up here? Steven Spielberg is bringing out so many flourishes from his other films, I'm halfway expecting a killer truck to show up and harass Dennis Weaver. <laughs> Watching Willie struggle with getting on top of the elephant without actually helping her get on top of the elephant. These people are dicks! We're not going to Delhi, doll. We're going to Pankot Palace. Waiting until now to deliver this news to Willie. But also, why does she have to go with them? There has to be another guide that could take her to Delhi. Why would Indy even want her to come? He seems to despise her. And even if he didn't, I can't imagine he would want her to risk her life along with him on this quest. Willie is this movie's square peg trying to fit Indy's round hole. Wait. Cut it out! There's plenty of room around the fire. Willie could just move away from the elephant. This movie really likes its situational humor. Which is weird, because very little of it is funny. Shorty's family were killed when the Japanese bombed Shanghai. He's been living on the streets since he was four. <laughs> I caught him trying to pick my pocket. Didn't I, short stuff? So kidnapping him and putting him in my adventures was the only natural thing to do. I'm trying to wrap my head around how this would even happen. How would Willie not realize she's touching something that is not her clothing? How would the bat let this happen? What was the bat doing on the ground? Why are we teaching Common Core math to kids? I have so many questions. I said, cut it out! Why does Willie think this is the elephant f***ing with her? She moved away from the elephant and has it in clear view of her. She would know the elephant isn't behind her. My name is Indiana Jones. Dr. Jones, the eminent archaeologist. Man. Being an archaeologist in 1935 must have been like being John Lennon in the 60s. The British find it amusing to inspect us at their convenience. The British. Sneak. Surprise. If you're stuffing eels inside a giant snake and calling it a meal, you're basically tearing down all the hard work you've done to make your temple look wholesome and good. This whole eating sequence definitely freaked me out as a kid, but as an adult I can see it's just an excuse to make fun of other cultures. This scene is gross, but it has all to do with the problematic point that is being made and nothing to do with the visuals that are presented to us. Peasants there told us Panko Palace was growing powerful again because of some ancient evil. If you're Indiana Jones, why would you bring this up? If you know the temple is running a crooked shop, you wouldn't want them to suspect why you're here, right? Does this asshole think he's James Bond? I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about folklore. 
Dude, you just said the villagers told you that the palace had taken something from them. You know, in the modern day. Nothing about folklore. You're f***ing the shop, man. Someone's gonna be waiting in your bedroom to kill you now. Are you happy about that? And wasn't it the Sultan of Madagascar who threatened to cut your head off? Seriously, how does rando pancot guy know so much about Indy? It's not like he knew Dr. Jones was coming. The director said, let's give Dr. Jones an apple so the audience will know he's an asshole. And then the director said, let's have Willie pounce on the apple like she's a starved hyena so the audience will know she will never be given anything to do in this movie that doesn't humiliate her. This has to be the assholiest apple scene since Genesis. This relationship makes zero sense, especially right now. They have been at each other's throats the entire time they've known each other, which at this point I think is around two days. If you want me, Willie, I know where you can find me. In a bedroom you're sharing with a young boy. This movie wastes a lot of time on whether Indy and Willie will f*** or not. Wow, I sure am glad this dude waited all this time to try and kill Indy. Think of all the tremendous humor about Indy and Willie's bruised egos we would have missed. So these flowers are moving because there's some sort of draft in the room, but there's no way it's moving them that much when the secret room is pretty tightly shut. Also, why would they put Willie in a room where the secret passage is located? I guess it could be hubris, but why take the damn chance that Indy or Willie would discover this? Well, looky there! Same drawing and everything! That sure worked out well for all involved in the quest. <sighs> Why would there be so many bugs swarming around this one section of the secret room? It's not like there's food here, and it's not the place where all the evil resides. Like, you just came from a bedroom, and you're about to walk into another room that's just one big booby trap. Why is the entire insect kingdom here? So they walk from the bug-filled chamber to this room, which is a booby trap for some reason. Really, the only practical reason why this room is a booby trap is because it's a holdover from Raiders of the Lost Ark, and you gotta give the fans what they love. But even the way it booby traps is silly. This one button on the floor that you could easily miss seals up the room. And this in no way I'll be a stone on the door causes the ceiling with spikes to come down. The very location of all this sh makes no sense. Why would you build all this sh next to a random bedroom in the palace? Oh, I broke a nail. Another instance of I broke a nail. Jesus Christ, why is this character? Here's an extra 50 cents for this movie going out of its way to make Willie Scott the most insufferable character in the history of cinema. Also, how does she not feel this giant bug resting on her hand? You can do it. Feel inside. Look, movie, you can't show me all the spikes this close to their heads and then 20 seconds later pretend like the ceiling hasn't already collapsed and skewered and smashed these guys yet. Indy and Willie are able to get across the room and under the descending wall in time. Valuing a hat this much. Jeez, I guess reaching into a dude's chest with your bare hands is pretty easy if that man's chest is made of paper mache. Looks like these guys are gonna die historic on the Fury Road. This might be the most specific sacrifice ritual ever made. Tear a dude's heart out, keep him alive, put him in a cage, and then melt his body? What the hell draws people to this religion? Do people get laid in this cult? That's the rock they took from the village. Super obvious statement is super obvious. Where's he going? Since there were guards behind Willie and Short Round, why did this asshole jump in front of them in the first place? Where the guards like, hey Hank, we can grab him from behind. And then Hank replied with, yeah, that would work, but wait till I stick my head up and scare him. I'd like to know if I still have the ability to make people sh the pants. The isolated scream of one child is what brought Indy here, but when he arrives, we see hundreds of child slaves all working in this huge factory. He would have definitely heard more commotion and definitely more than just a single child screaming as if it were coming from Hell's baby monitor. I appreciate Indy trying to save this kid, but that doesn't mean I buy for a second. He would alert everyone to his presence without having a better plan in place. <laughs> Were these guys behind Indy the whole time? What were they waiting for? And are they trained to pull all their blades out in unison? Do they get punished if any of them are off the mark? I want to know more about these guys. Where's their movie? Why are some of the prisoners chained up to where they can't move, and Shorty and a couple of the other kids are chained at the hands, but they can move around freely? I keep telling you, you listen to me more, you live longer. Short Round is still capable of making jokes when locked up in the child slavery dungeon. They will make me drink the blood of the Kali. Then I'll fall into the black sleep of the Kalima. Conveniently placed prisoner that delivers Indian short round much needed knowledge is conveniently placed. Soon we will have all the five Shankara stones and the tuggies will be all powerful. What a vivid imagination. Indy, you just saw a man get his heart removed and he was still alive. Maybe it's not imagination. You don't believe me? I mean, Indy is still 22 years away in his timeline from seeing aliens, so he's not quite there yet, Mola Ram. But these Sankara stones are going to look realistic as hell compared to what goes down in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> Were the leather jacket, hat, and whip necessary for the Indy voodoo doll to work? Did the film make the Maharaja a kid so Short Round would have a nemesis? Because I think the film made the Maharaja a kid so Short Round would have a nemesis. Even if these people worship an evil god, this is still way too much overcandling. And why are there three candles per foot on this stone slab India's lying on? Meanwhile, in Bram Stoker's Dracula... I'm not gonna have anything nice to say about this place when I get back! Many people are unaware that shortly after these events, Willie Scott would create TripAdvisor. The movie's been pretty clear how f***ing evil this cult is. And there are always multiple slave drivers whipping children to make that fact 
clear. But now, when Short Round wants to break his chains, nobody's around. Why the f is there a rope dangling from this red hole? I probably don't want to be asking questions like that. Why are they sending Willie down into the fire pit without removing her heart first? There's not even a little bit of explanation about why her sacrifice would be different from the previous one we saw. Somehow, after drinking blood that changes your entire demeanor, a dream from which you never wake up, someone can simply burn you and it snaps you out of it. We have a ritual headpiece off. We have a ritual headpiece on. Malaram! <laughs> <laughs> what? This trapdoor is more ridiculous than the one Remy Malik uses in No Time to Die. White Savior narratives. Okay, everybody, when you're running out of the palace, make it look like you haven't seen the sunlight in a very long time. Just, well, I guess that message got to about two of you. F*** it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why did the Maharaja remove the pin from the doll? He had Indy down for the count. Why give him another chance to defeat you? Now this asshole is just sitting there with the voodoo doll wondering what to do while Indy rallies in the fight. Now he gets back to poking the doll as if this is a video game where you have a voodoo power bar to refill before you can go back to voodooing. Indy's head will be this close to the rock crusher for the next 14 goddamn seconds. And while I don't want Indy to die, and he can't since this is a prequel anyway, he should be dead. If they had guns, why were they coming at Indy with swords this whole time? The movie expects me to believe that short rounds kicks and punches are this effective. I know I've been giving this movie a lot of crap, but the mind cart sequence is the sh and is one of the most memorable parts of all three films, because there are only three films in the Indiana Jones franchise. But also, a literal roller coaster ride. Like, who the f made these tracks do this sh and why? We got company! You could take Han Solo out of the Star Wars, but you can't take the Star Wars out of Han Solo. Introducing one of the funniest, not the actors, shots in movie history. How big is this mine anyway? I thought the Cali cult was looking for two stones hidden by a priest in the catacombs, but this is a full blown mine that goes for f***ing miles. Why would they ever need something this huge and intricate to search what should be a relatively small area? This is probably more impossible than the jump in speed. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't say that with a straight face, but still. Movie once again shows us something approaching that is way too close to escape, but we'll find a way to let the protagonist live anyway. Check out these glowing assholes! I like how this movie shows the alligators down below, as if the steep fall off this bridge wouldn't kill them first. Also, they're supposed to be crocodiles, but they filmed alligators. Movie doesn't know how to geography. Hey look, it's a repeat of that scene from Raiders when Indy casually shot that guy. But guess what? He knows he doesn't have a gun here, right? How can he possibly not know that at this point? He needed a gun in the worst way for like the last 30 minutes of this movie. Amazing how the big hole short round put into this bridge a minute ago isn't there anymore. How the f***? Drop them, Dr. Jones! They will be found! You won't! How does Mola Ram know for certain the stones will be found? And who's going to look for them in alligator-infested waters? Behind you! This bridge is on for some time. Can they not see Willie, Indy, and Short Round tying themselves to the bridge? Wouldn't that be a dead giveaway as to what's about to happen? What, are you doing? what about this confuses Mola Ram? Indy has been holding the sword up for the last 20 seconds, and Short Round loudly pronounced they were going for a ride. Read the room, Mola Ram. Indy, cover your heart! Because of all the different things Mola Ram would do while hanging from a broken bridge on a cliff, it's that Kali Ma bullsh**. Short Round predicts this so well, I think he gave Mola Ram the idea to do it. <laughs> Man, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but this guy is evil! There are like 50 archers on this bridge, and you'd think one guy, even with terrible aim, would hit Indy, but they don't. <laughs> guys, I no longer know what's going on. It's crazy how gently Mola Ram's body hits this rock on the way down, as if physics is forgiving. By the way, with this movie in Romancing the Stone, we were kind of obsessed with people getting eaten by crocs and gators in 1984, weren't we? Movie pretends like Short Round can't find another angle to see Indy hanging from the bridge or ask the other side if they can see him. Movie shows Indy, Willie, and Short Round walking a lonely walk when we know there are hundreds of children following them, but for some reason they aren't in the picture because this movie needs to make a big emotional reveal. But also, why aren't the kids already at home anyway? We saw the one kid earlier who escaped and found his way back to the village, so You'd think at least one person out of that group would know the way home. Did they wait for Indy to win the movie while they congregated at a Stuckies? Fifty Shades of my god, this is f***ed up. Might want to wipe that elephant snot off your face before- Okay, you're just going for it. You won't be needing this. What's that? Antidote. To what? The poison you just drank up <laughs> with We are laughing. <laughs> Sorry, thought you're making a move. Monkey's brains, though popular in Cantonese cuisine, are not often to be found in Washington, D.C. Oh my god! Oh my god! them, sir. And 
And when my wife tried to prevent me from doing my duty, I corrected her. We use a large vibrating egg. You will, Dr. Jones. You will be. I feel terrible. 